بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Today we'll continue our previous lecture about the facial spaces of the head and neck and we reach the mastectory spaces The mastectory spaces are potential spaces present around the muscles of mastications and you know what are the muscles of mastications are the master muscle the pterygoid muscles and the temporalis muscle and these spaces mastectory spaces are we uh, the mass submasteric space the pterygoid or pterygomandibular space and the temporal spaces the submasteric space what we mean by submasteric space it means beneath the masseter muscle and if you remember the origin and insertion of the master muscle you will know easily the boundaries of this space the masteric muscle or the master muscle it's, it's arise from the zygomatic arch and the maxillary process of the zygomatic bone and it inserts on the lateral uh, side or aspects of the ankle of the mandible so the boundaries of this space are anteriorly we have the anterior border of master muscle and vaccinator muscle posteriorly we will have the parotid gland posterior part of the masseter muscle and inferiorly we have the lower border of the mandible medially we have the lateral surface of the ramus of mandible and laterally we have the medial surface of master muscle so this space lie between the master muscle and the ramus of the mandible what are the content of this space the contents of this space include first of all we have the masteric nerve which is a branch uh, motor uh, nerve uh, from the mandibular division of trigeminal nerve and second we have the superficial temporal artery which is one of the terminal branches of the external carotid artery and as you know this terminal branch arises from the external carotid artery at the level of the ankle of the mandible the external carotid artery divides into its two terminal branches which are the superficial temporal artery and the maxillary artery at the level of the ankle of the mandible the third content is the transverse transverse facial artery which is a branch from the superficial temporal artery that pass transversely across the face supply the skin and facial muscles the fourth content is the are the muscles of mastication and here we have the um, uh, the muscle is the master master muscle and also the ramus and posterior part of the mandible although these structures the muscle and the ramus and posterior part of the mandible are at the lateral aspects of the space but some say that these two structures included within the space how the infection reach this submasteric space actually this space can be infected through can be involved through infection in the third molar in the third molar if there is infection of the third molar and not treated properly properly this infection can reach this space the second space is the pterygomandibular space and here the pterygo is the medial pterygoid muscle and the mandible so this space will be present or be located between the medial pterygoid muscle and the mandible again if you know the origin and insertion of the medial pterygoid muscle 
you will know the boundaries of this space. The origin of the pterygoid or medial pterygoid muscle, as you know, it is from the medial side of the lateral pterygoid plate. And it inserts in the medial surface of the ankle of the mandible. So its boundaries are laterally we will have the medial surface of the ramus of mandible. Medially we will have the lateral surface of the medial pterygoid muscle. Posteriorly there is the deeper portion of the parotid gland and as you know the parotid gland has two portion or two parts the superficial and the deep part so the deeper part of the parotid gland will form the posterior boundary of this pterygomandibular space anteriorly we will have the pterygomandibular raphi and this pterygomandibular raphi or ligament as you know it passes from the hamulus of the medial pterygoid plate and insert into or attach to the posterior end of the mylohyoid line the line from which the mylohyoid muscle arise the superior boundary of this space trigomandibular space is the lateral pterygoid muscle and here this picture will show you the site of this space here we have the medial pterygoid muscle and here have the ramus of the mandible the sum of it is divided removed and here posteriorly we have the posterior portion or the deeper portion of the parotid gland and the superior boundary is the lateral pterygoid muscle this is the lateral pterygoid muscle and of course anteriorly we have the pterygomandibular ligament so this space is called pterygomandibular space what are the contents of this space we have the lingual and mandibular nerves the inferior alveolar artery which is a branch of the maxillary artery and we have the mylohyoid nerve and vessels and the mylohyoid nerve which is motor nerve supply to the mylohyoid muscle is arise from the inferior alveolar nerve before it enter the mandibular uh, canal uh, and of course this uh, inferior alveolar nerve and uh, from it the, the mylohyoid nerve these branches are all from the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve from where the infection can reach this space the infection can reach the pterygomandibular space either from the infratemporal space or fossa or from the buccal space or from the submandibular space so these three spaces if any infection occur on this uh, in any of these spaces and not treated properly early properly the infection can separate to the pterygomandibular space And here this picture will show you the spaces and how the infection can separate from one space to another. Here we have the mouth and this is the tongue, it's the floor of the mouth of course. Here we have the vaccinator muscle, cheek containing the vaccinator muscle and of course this is the ramus of the mandible which is divided here and from outside 
ramus of the mandible we have the mastic muscle and from inside we have the medial pterygoid muscle and this is the parotid gland so between the mastic muscle and the ramus of the mandible here we have this space which is called submastic space and between the medial pterygoid muscle and the medial surface of the ramus of the mandible, mandible we have this space which is called the pterygomandibular space and of course here we have the buc buccal space on the lateral aspects of the vaccinator muscle and also here we have another space between the pharynx this is the pharynx this is the pharynx here is the pharynx البلعوم. between the lateral wall of the pharynx this is the lateral of the pharynx and the medial pterygoid here we have another space which is called lateral pharyngeal space we will dis discuss it later on inshallah this is the lateral pharyngeal space and here behind or posterior to the pharynx we have another space which is called retropharyngeal space this is retropharyngeal space this is behind the posterior to the to the pharynx so this is the retropharyngeal space this is the lateral pharyngeal space this is the pterygomandibular space and here we have the submastic space and of course here we have the submandibular space below the mandible and of course here we have the buccal space so if any infection occur in the submandibular space or in the buccinator space or in the infratemporal not clear here this infection if it's not treated and if uh, diagnosis delayed and they should not receive treatment early the infection can spread from these spaces buccal spaces or submandibular spaces can separate to the pterygomandibular space to the pterygomandibular space and of course also can separate to the lateral pharyngeal space here the lateral pharyngeal space now we have the temporal space the temporal space it is secondary to the initial involvement of pterygomandibular and infratemporal spaces and if infection occur here in the pterygomandibular and in infratemporal spaces and also not treated the infection will separate to another spaces it will separate to another spaces these other spaces are the temporal spaces so it is a facial space in relation to the temporalis muscle it will ascend upward the infection here from the pterygomandibular and infratemporal if not treated it will ascend upward upwards to involve another spaces which are the temporal spaces these temporal spaces are two spaces we have the superficial temporal space and we have the deep temporal space of course the superficial temporal space is superficial to the temporalis muscle and the deep temporal space is between the muscle and the temporal bone and parietal bone where the muscle is present so this superficial and deep are related to the temporalis muscle one is superficial to the muscle the other is deep to the temporalis muscle what are the contents of these spaces of course we have the superficial temporal space containing the superficial temporal vessels and as we know the superficial temporal artery are uh, is the uh, one of the terminal termination 
terminal branches of the external carotid artery and also you have the auriculotemporal nerve and in the deep temporal space we have the deep temporal arteries and veins and these are branched from the maxillary artery the parotid space it is formed by splitting of the superficial layer of the deep cervical fascia the superficial layer of the deep cervical fascia as you know it has another name which is the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia which is the first layer which is the anterior layer of the deep cervical fascia so this investing as you know investing means it surrounds to uh, heat or to lift as it ascends and reach the parotid, this fascia will split and envelop or ensheath or invest the parotid gland, forming and this uh, splitting of the fascia will form this parotid space. Inferiorly, we have the stylomandibular ligament and this ligament will separate the parotid space from the submandibular space you see the parotid space is separated from the submandibular space by which the structure by the stylomandibular ligament as you know the stylomandibular ligament passes from the styloid process to the mandible. What are the contents of the parotid space? If you remember the structures that pass through the parotid gland, three FRE. In addition to these three structures, we have the lymph nodes. So the contents of the parotid space, we have the external carotid artery, we have the retromandibular vein which is also called posterior facial vein and also we have the facial nerve and the lymph nodes of course in case of viral infection of the parotid gland or suppurative infection bacterial infection of the parotid gland these spaces will fill surrounding the parotid gland will be filled with inflammatory fluid and will be opened and also these lymph nodes some of them are within the parotid gland between uh, the fascia and the parotid tissue also when this lymph nodes enlarged and may suppurate and may uh, develop abscess and when this happened when this inflammatory process infection and pus formation uh, occur this spaces the parotid space surrounding the parotid gland will be opened to contain the pus and the inflammatory fluid the other place is the pharyngeal space or what's called we have two pharyngeal space we have the lateral right lateral pharyngeal space and left lateral pharyngeal space it is also these spaces pharyngeal space is also called pharyngo maxillary space because it is located between the lateral part of the pharynx or the lateral of the pharynx and the maxilla so they are also called pharyngo maxillary space it is a potential inverted cone shaped يعني على شكل مخروط مخروط مقلوب its space قاعدة المخروط 
with uh, add the scalp the base of this space is toward the scalp and its apex at the hyoid bone it lies deep to the pharyngeal constrictor muscles it lies deep to the pharyngeal constrictor muscles it is divided into anterior and posterior compartments by the styloid process so here the styloid process will divide this pharyngeal space into an anterior and posterior compartment the boundaries superiorly as we said this cone-shaped space, its space attached to the skull. And thirdly, its apex, as we said, to the hyoid bone. And thirdly, we have the pterygomandibular space. Imagine this location. And thirdly, we have the pterygomandibular space. Posteriorly, we have the stylohyoid muscle and the upper part of carotid sheath. You see, the carotid upper part of the carotid sheath, of course, with it, the stylohyoid muscle will be the posterior boundary of this pharyngeal space. And medially, we have the pharyngeal wall the pharyngeal wall with of course the, the constrictor pharyngeal muscles the upper and middle constrictor muscles and in addition also we have the buccopharyngeal fascia laterally we have the ascending ramus of mandible and the medial surface of deep lobe of the parotid gland. What are the contents of this pharyngeal space? As we said, it is divided by the side of process uh, into anterior compartment and posterior compartment. In the anterior compartment, we have just lymph nodes the facial artery and loose connective tissue leaf nodes facial artery and loose areolar connective tissue in the posterior compartment we have the carotid sheath containing the internal jugular vein and the internal carotid artery and the vagus nerve and also in addition to the carotid sheath, we have the hypoglossal nerve, cranial nerve number 12, and the cervical sympathetic trunk. Cervical sympathetic trunk, inshallah, we will discuss this structure in the coming lectures within the central nervous system, inshallah. Now we have the retropharyngeal space. I show you in the previous slide the site of retropharyngeal space. Retro means behind, so this space lies behind the pharynx. It is a potential midline space between the pharyngobasilar fascia, which attaches the pharyngeal constrictors to base of a skull, and the prevertebral fascia. The prevertebral fascia, which is the third layer of the deep cervical fascia. And the pharyngobasilar fascia, fascia between, uh, in the back of the pharynx, and here, uh, in the midline of this fascia, we have the median pharyngeal raphi, 
so this is from uh, the anterior uh, uh, boundary of the space and the posterior boundary is the pre pre vertebral fascia so the boundaries anterior we have the pharyngobasilar fascia and posteriorly we have the pre vertebral fascia and laterally on on both sides of course this space on the right and space on the left so laterally we have the carotid sheet if it is in the right the right carotid sheet and if it is the left the left carotid sheet the retropharyngeal space is continuous with the retropharyngeal with the retroesophageal space into the posterior mediastinum and here of course uh, any infection like retropharyngeal abscess or tumors or any pathological problem that occur at this space because it is continuous with the retro esophageal space and to the posterior mediastinum the infection may reach these posterior mediastinum and the situation would be very serious if the patient not treated urgently and given proper treatment اذا ما عالجنا المريض بشكل سريع ومبكر فالالتهاب سوف يتقدم ويصبح في البوستيير ميديستاينم وهذا المكان من البوستيير ميديستاينم if any infection occur here which is very uh, serious it will end with mediastinitis that's the infection of the mediastinum and here this part of the mediastinum if any infection occur in this part of the mediastinum or even in the middle or anterior mediastinum it is very serious it carry high morbidity and mortality rate يعني نسبة مرابة ووفيات تكون عالية here this picture will show you this retropharyngeal space this is this red line is the pre-vertebral fascia and this is the pharyngobasilar fascia this green line between this fascia and of course this is the pharynx between this fascia behind the pharynx and the fascia the pre-vertebral fascia here this potential space is present and this of course the pharynx ends at as we said in the six cervical vertebra and from here the esophagus will start so this retropharyngeal space is continuous with the retroesophageal space downward to the posterior mediastinum now we have the peritonsillar space peri means around حول فالسبيس الفسحة حول اللوزة peritonsillar space what are the boundaries of this peritonsillar space medially I will say in the direction of the oral cavity we have the capsule of the palatine tonsil and the tonsil itself so the capsule of the palatine tonsil and the tonsil itself form the medial boundary of the peritonsillar space laterally we have the superior pharyngeal constrictor muscle laterally we have the superior pharyngeal constrictor muscle anteriorly we have the anterior tonsillar pillar containing within this pillar containing the palatoglossus muscle and posteriorly we have the posterior tonsillar pillar containing the palatopharyngeus muscle so it is very simple 
uh, boundaries of this periton cellular space. Involvement infection, how this periton cellular space become infected and even sometimes the infection will become more advanced to form pus collection. This infection coming from the depth of tonsillar crypt. You know the tonsil has many crypts or uh, it contains a main crypt from the depth if any food or infection uh, contaminated food and infection occur in this a crypt, tonsil crypt, from the depth of this crypt, the infection may spread to the peritonsillar space or supratonsillar fossa, or the infection can reach this space from a supratonsillar fossa, or the infection to this space can occur as a complication of acute pericoronal abscess of acute pericoronal abscess and pericoronal abscess is a localized purulent infection purulent يعني قيحي صديدي infection التهاب تقيحي within the gum tissue surrounding the crown of a partially or fully erupted foot so these are the sources of infection that can separate to the peritensoral space causing swelling and pus collection in this space here we have this picture showing this peritensoral space and of course here is the normal this is the normal side and this is the pathological side the normal side you see this is the tonsil and this is the palatoglossus fold which is from the anterior boundary and here it's not clear the palato the palatophalangeus fold or the posterior pillar and in between the we have the, the tonsil so the tonsil and this is the capsule of the tonsil the capsule of the tonsil and the tonsil form the medial boundary of this space and the muscle or the superior pharyngeal constrictor muscles form the lateral wall of the space you see this is this space here is not a clear because as we said this is a normal situation in health these spaces are potential spaces that say they are not actually present but once there is infection here the pus or the inflammatory fluid and pus will be collected in these facial spaces causing this problem so do you see this spaces by pus this is pus I Sadid will expand, will open these spaces, and the pus will collect it here. And of course, these uh, pus will not reach the carotid sheath, not reach this area, not this area, because there is this fascia that localize the pus and localize the infection, and this is the maximum site of expansion all this limitation occur because of the presence of this fascia of course this is called the peritonsillar abscess here kharraj haul al and this is the tonsil it is called the palatine tonsil here the syringe aspirate in the, the, the syringe is injected here the needle is introduced in this abscess cavity and here you see drainage of the pus from this area well thank you very much see you in the next lectures inshallah